So the important parts here is, the nice thing about forces is that they just add. You can find the net force by just adding the individual forces. Now there's a sense in which we're doing a subtraction here, but it's actually probably best not to think of it that way, because then we get confused. We should always think about the net force as an addition. Net force is an addition. However, some of the numbers you're adding are positive numbers, and some of the numbers you're adding are negative numbers. And then any subtraction, so to speak, will take care of themselves, as long as you put in the right signs. So how do people tend to get this wrong? The biggest mistake is forgetting to put in the signs. The, by far the biggest mistakes is just figuring out the magnitudes. Probably most students here would just add 1.2 times 10 to the 10th and 6 times 10 to the 9th. So it's crucial. Remember our whole approach here is that the formula gives us the magnitude and we are responsible for the signs. Well that approach is not going to work if we forget to put in the signs. So we really have to make a, a strong note in our notes that we have to put in the correct signs here. We can't just do the magnitudes. I think the best way to do this then is do the sign first. We didn't do that here, but we should have. The first thing we should have done was say, oh, this has a negative sign. And then we can add the magnitude on separately. And we could have started by saying this has a positive sign. If you do the signs first, it's, it's harder to forget them. Whereas if you leave them for the, to do the signs after the magnitudes, it's easy to forget them. Also, if you always put a sign in front of all negative and positive numbers, then you're always thinking about the signs and it's easier not to forget about those. Of course, we could do the same here deal now to find the net force on charge one or the net force on charge three. That would be a good exercise. Let's see if we've covered this stuff in the problem. Yeah, let's go over another important idea. This is actually a very good problem. These are very uh, typical types of test questions. Let's say we have two charges here, charge two and charge one. Charge two is at a height of three, and charge one is at a horizontal distance of four. Charge one is plus five coulombs, and charge two is plus seven coulombs. And let's try to figure out the net force on charge one. Now the new complication here is that these are not in the same dimension, so to speak. So we should talk through this. How would that change things here? How would we need to attack this? Um. And let's say that well, yeah, go ahead and uh, what were your thoughts? Well, I think we could use like our three, the same equation except for the r squared would be the hypotenuse, I guess. That's a good insight. That's right. Yeah, so how would we find the r squared here? Um, yeah, we would find r squared by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, it turns out there's going to be some other extra steps. That's an excellent, a good start. So let's get started with that. Let's work that out. Now, what are you trying to figure out? R? Yeah, what are the units on R? Meters. Good. Now, what numbers are you plugging into your equation? Oh, uh, wrong numbers. Right. So, I would be using 3 and... Right. Now, the first thing to do would be to actually draw a picture. 
The Pythagorean theorem refers to a right triangle. So let's draw the right triangle that we're dealing with. Good, and it's good that you gave the hypotenuse a label, except instead of calling it H, we might as well call it R, yes. since that's what we're using for that. We need to find this distance here. Well, let's start with the basic Pythagorean theorem. Do you remember what's the, what does the Pythagorean theorem tell us about the relationship between these numbers? Um, what about the equation? Yeah. Uh, R squared equals the square root. Let's actually remind ourselves of that equation. Square. It's um, the square of, I mean, like the y squared. Yeah. The square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of the legs. The square of the hypotenuse is the sum of the squares of the legs. How would that apply here? So r squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. Good. So r squared is equal to 25. Mm -hmm. So r is equal to 5. Right. I happen to make this into a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. If we saw this was a 3, 4, 5 right triangle, we would know automatically this is 5. But in general, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance. That tells us that r here is 5. Notice that we didn't have to do any subtracting or square rooting here. What you might have been thinking about is if you want to solve for a leg, you need to do subtractions and square rootings. But still, it's still best to start with the general form of the equation as a sum. And then you can do the algebra that you need. So this is the most easy, I think this is the easiest to remember form of the equation right here. So now we know that our r is 5 meters. Now, we were trying to figure out the net force on charge 1. This is the magnitude. The direction here is trickier. Start with, let's just try drawing the force vector on charge 1. Try to put that force vector into your picture. What is the, what's the direction of that force vector? From charge 1. On charge 1. Remember, the question was asking us the net force on charge 1. So, so we want to draw the direction of the force on charge 1. It would be a Let's draw the, the direction of the overall force vector. So I think you're thinking to the right? Yeah. Now that would not really be a direct repulsion. That would not really be a direct repulsion. Let's say these were free to move. How would they move since they're repelling each other? I, I guess so. Sorry. That's right. So there's no law that says that forces always have to be horizontal or vertical. In real life, forces can uh, clearly be at an angle. So the forces are being exerted along this line between the two particles. The forces are going to be exerted on a line between the two particles. So what's the direction of the force on charge 1? This is the direction of the force on charge 1. It's, not, uh, it's being pushed not just to the right, but also down. So here's the direction of the force on charge 1. And for that matter, what's the direction of the force on charge 2? Forces are always exerted along the line that connects the particles. That's actually a part of Coulomb's law that's often not, times not explained. Forces are exerted along the line that connects the particles. We didn't have to really think about this too much before, because before all the particles, all the charges were arranged horizontally. 
But now the charges are not horizontally arranged, so we have to focus on this slanting line between them. This is what the r hat is trying to convey in the r hat equation. Remember we said r hat is a unit vector that's pointing from one charge to the other. Well, that is conveying the idea that the forces are along the line that points from one charge to the other. This is a vector that's pointing from one charge to the other to convey the fact that the forces are directed along the line that connects the two forces. So even though we're not using the r hat approach, we can see that's reflected in this equation as well.